Hello, my name is Miranda Fernandez-Berto, and this is my video report on Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Frankenstein by English writer Mary Shelley is a piece of gothic slash horror fiction that was published in 1817 during the Enlightenment and Romanticism periods. These periods focused on ideas revolving around the idealizing and appeal of the real world, which would be romanticism, and the emphasis on reason, individualism, and scientific studies, which would be enlightenment. Characters Throughout Frankenstein, there are several recurring characters, either major or minor to the story, including Victor Frankenstein, the creator of the monster, a tragic character that his ambitions and passions in science have ultimately led to his unending miseries. The monster, created by Victor and then rejected by him and society, which leads to his malicious behavior. Henry Clerval, Victor's loyal best friend, who is unaware of what troubles Victor, yet stays loyal to him and helps him through it. Elizabeth Lavenza, Victor's wife-to-be, who was raised by his family throughout childhood. Alphonse Frankenstein, Victor Frankenstein's sickly and elderly father, Carolyn Buford Frankenstein, Victor's deceased mother, William Frankenstein, Victor's youngest brother, Justine Mortiz, the Frankenstein family's housekeeper, the De Lacy family, a family who the monster observes as he lives outside of their cottage for some extended period of time. In these observances, um, this allows the monster to learn about language, emotions, human relationships, etc. Robert Walton, who is an Arctic explorer that finds Victor during his chase of the monster near the end of the novel, and who listens to Victor's tale and records it through letters with his sister. And Margaret Seville, Robert's sister, who learns about Victor's story through the letters that she shares with her brother while he is on his voyage. Plot. The events of Frankenstein are recounted by Robert Walton, who finds Victor close to his death while he is chasing the monster and brings him aboard his ship. At this time, Victor is very sickly, but at some point he does regain some sort of strength and he becomes closely acquainted with Robert and retells the tale of his story of, regarding the monster and its creation, which Robert then documents through letters with his sister as he is on his Arctic exploration. Victor begins by recalling his childhood in Geneva, in which he acquires an interest for the natural philosophies and the sciences. And during this time, Victor becomes good friends with Henley Creval, and his family also adopts Elizabeth into their family, in which they grow up with each other and become very close and decide that when they grow up, they will become married. Once he is older, Victor then attends the University of Ingolstadt to study natural philosophy and chemistry in which he becomes heavily invested in figuring out the secrets of mortality and he decides to do several years of research to find it. After a lengthy study, Victor begins to put together old human remains during several nights of severe labor in an attempt to bring life and discover its secrets. One night, the creature comes to life and Victor realizes the reality of the monstrosity that has just come before him and he flees his apartment, running into Henry and becoming very, very sickly. After several months of fighting his ailments under the care of Henry and facing travel complications back to Geneva, back to his home, Victor then decides that he is going to go back to Geneva officially when his father writes to him and tells him about the death of his brother William, who was strangled to death one night when the family was out on a walk. Convinced that it was the monster's doing, Victor heads to Geneva, where Justine Mortis is currently facing convictions of the crime and has been accused of the murder. After a long time coming into the courts, Justine is then found guilty and is executed, leaving Victor to have a guilty conscience about the knowledge of the real murderer and what is actually coming to play. In an attempt to ease his mind, Victor decides to travel into the mountains for vacation, where the monster eventually finds him and tells experiences after he was given life and after he had left the apartment that night. 
he had experienced a lot of cruelty from the humans, hunger, misery, and loneliness. He also tells of how he had stayed by a cottage and had learned language, emotions, relationships, etc. because he had observed the Zalesi family from afar, who he had tried to gain the trust of after observing them for such a long period of time, but does not gain that trust. With his story being told to Victor, he then admits to the murders of William and for framing Justine for the murder, and he asks for his understanding. He asks for Victor's understanding and to sympathize with the, with the cruelty, mil misery, and insufferable loneliness that he had been facing from humanity all this time. He asked Victor to create a monster just like himself of the opposite sex in order to have companionship and that he would leave Victor and humanity forever. Victor initially refuses, very reluctant to agree with the monster, picturing the horrors of creating such a creature once again, but he is eventually persuaded by the monster and decides that he will create a female version of the monster and begins his studies to create this female monster. As he is halfway through this horrible second creation, Victor realizes the consequences of its creation and destroys the monster before it is finished, angering the, the monster as he swears vengeance and states, I shall be with you on your wedding night. Soon after, Victor leaves his temporary cottage home, landing in a small town where he is accused of the murder of a man who ends up being Henry, who was strangled to death and washed up on the shore of the town. Victor faces trial, but is eventually found innocent and decides that he will go back to Geneva and marry Elizabeth. As, Victor as Victor's wedding day soon approaches, he comes to terms with his own miseries and the consequences of his actions, accepting that he will be the next victim. The night of his marriage to Elizabeth, they go off to their honeymoon state, where the monster murders Elizabeth. Shocked, Victor then devotes his life to chasing and killing the monster as the chase drags on, Victor comes close to reaching the monster when he is saved by Robert, who had been recounting this tale the entire time. He is taken into Robert's ship, and shortly after, he dies on the ship, as the monster looks upon him one more time before departing and disappearing from humanity forever. This ends with Robert retelling the story to Margaret through the letters, and the story comes to a close. Themes and Symbols Throughout Frankenstein, there are several themes and symbols that are addressed throughout the novel. One major theme is isolation. Throughout the entirety of the novel, isolation and loneliness is heavily addressed, some instances including Victor's isolation due to him being the only one that was aware of the monster's creation and how it had affected him, and the monster's isolation specifically from being very lonely and not accepted from society, facing several miseries as a result since he was cast out and had no one to comfort him or sympathize with him, leaving him confused after learning of human relationships and sympathy and emotions. Another major theme is consequences as a result of one's actions. The events of the novel are heavily centered around the consequences of Victor's actions. Although at first Victor does not acknowledge that his choices result in consequences, he understands later in the novel that he will come to terms with his actions having severe consequences, which leads to the death of many of his family members, as well as his own death in the end. The novel also has a heavy focus on the state of misery and its effects, like those with Victor and the monster, as well as serving as a social commentary on how society rejects those who are out of the norm, and the state at which beings must lie to be treated humanely and what it means to be human. Favorite quotes. One of my favorite quotes from the book was, learn from me, if not by my precepts, at least by my example, how dangerous is the acquirement of knowledge and how much happier that man is who believes his native town to be the world and he who aspires to become greater than his nature will allow it. I really like this quote because I feel that it is expressing how a man that believes where he is from, how that is his whole world, and how he understands that that is what he is there for is better than someone who is reaching for something, then his nature will not allow him to get there. 
if one is not able to get to a certain state and they are trying to reach for that, it will lead to their utter demise or just their misery because they cannot reach the unreachable. Another quote that I'm very fond of was, the different accidents of life are not so changeable as the feelings of human nature. As to say, things that happen in life won't change much like how, fe how people don't control their feelings. There is an extent to what people will control their feelings, however, they won't be able to control everything, much as some of the accidents of life which happen unintentionally. That's why they're called accidents. The, the novel as a whole faces many themes surrounding misery and just the state of being human, and I feel that because of that, the novel is very well written and addressed these issues very well. So, that was Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Thank you.